Welcome to Thursday Night Knives. I'm Bob DeMarco. Coming up, I got two really cool fixed blade knives new to me to show to you. Uh, one very lucky gentleman junkie will be winning an off-grid knives gri grizzly. That's an outdoor camp kitchen knife. Very, very sweet. And then we're going to talk about what knife companies do you trust the most? And of course, you have to trust the product. I mean, that's a prerequisite. You have to love and like and um, trust the product itself. But in terms of the company that makes it and backs it, uh, how much do you trust that company? Uh, I want to talk about that. Um, uh, I have some into uh, some intuitions about some companies, uh, but I, I have yet to cash in on any um, any sort of uh, warranty. So I want to hear from you guys. Uh, so we're going to be talking about all of that stuff. Uh, and before we dive into that, I just want to say thank you to Mr. Greg T. Mr. Greg T, I so greatly appreciate this uh, this thank you here, this $9.99. I really appreciate that. He says, thank you for bringing us this interview. Appreciate it. And it was, of course, our in-depth interview with Bob Terzuola. Uh, we have spoke with him once before, uh, right when this uh, podcast was green, when this show was brand new. And uh, we've learned a lot since then. And um, uh, we got video, we got all these other things, and really had a Good chance to dive in with the godfather of the modern tactical folder. So, uh, Greg T., Mr. Greg T., I want to thank you for thanking me in such a generous way, thanking us in such a generous way. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, so, um, before we dive in, uh, I happen to have a knife right here I want to show you. Pete Davidson, nice to have you here, sir. Good day, Bob. Jim, the lurker, and the rest of you junkies. How's it going? The last few shows have been the duck's guts. I've never heard that one. The duck's guts. Good on you, boys. Spiderco, Cold Steel, and Victorinox never let me down. Trustworthy. Huh. Those are those are actually three that came to mind uh, for, for various reasons. Uh, Zedenic Bart, nice to have you here, sir. Uh, Bussy Combat Knives. Now, I've never had a Bussy. Uh, I'm curious about their Infini steel, Infini. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. Uh, but besides that, their designs are just beautiful. And um, they're kind of, they have a mystique or a mystery to them. They're they are not uh, very out in the open. You don't see them too much, even though you saw them for years on uh, Walking Dead. Have a nice day. Nice to have you here, sir. Good evening, Junkalos, he says. Well, good evening. Right back at you. Ground Fog, good to have you here, Ground Fog. Fernando Salome, good to have you, Fernando. Always have this Sentry L1 close at hand, thanks to you. Uh, big guillotine. Greetings, Knife Junkies. Bob, Jim, glad to be here. Love you all. Our love, your love, right back at you, sir. Dave, nice to have you here with us. Evening, jun uh, Junkalodians. I like that. Uh, most trusted knife company has to be Hogue. I'm with you on that. Hogue's an old company. Uh, been around pleasing... Well, that's not the right way to put it, but been around uh, uh, satisfying customers for years. And here they are doing it with some of the most awesome knives. Uh, Dave, check out Dave's latest uh, acquisition from Ken Vahikite of Black Rock Knives. It is wicked cool. Colby, nice to have you. Colby Venable. Uh, good evening, everyone, he says. Good evening to you, sir. I hope you're enjoying that cigar. Uh, Eugene Page, howdy from Wyoming. Eugene, I was in Wyoming once when I was 10 on a camping trip with the family and uh man what a beautiful 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 place you live or at least where you are living currently at the moment uh splitting slices nice to have you here howdy at uh howdy knife junkie jim junkies and all there for thursday night knives as always byron a pleasure to have you with us donald fry hey bob captive audience thanks to covid looking forward to the conversation tonight sorry to hear you have covid man um uh, I, is this your first time? Probably not, but, uh, sucks nonetheless. So, uh, just, just, uh, let's see, what is it? Sleep, laughter, and chicken soup. But they're all kind of in competition for the best medicine. So if you go for all three, um, you're probably squared away. I hope you're feeling better real soon. Uh, sword XXY. Nice to have you here. Good day, Bob, Jim, and junkies. Well, good day to you, sir. Have a Knife Day says, this weekend, I'll be going to SoCal sword fighting. How cool. It's a HEMA tournament, and I'll be checking out the events. So have a Knife Day. I've, I've been watching this guy, Robin Sword, on, um, well, his name is something Mayo, Robert Mayo, maybe. It's not Robin, uh, but Robin Sword is his 
uh, YouTube channel and his um, Instagram channel. And uh, he's a very cultured gentleman, and he's got a wicked collection of swords and really knows HEMA and has a lot of really, uh, really interesting videos. You might be interested in checking him out. Will be good to have you here, Will. Uh, you might just win this here. Grizzly. Uh, this is the Grizzly V2. He says, uh, hey, junkies, Jim and Bob. Uh, Will, you know, always a pleasure. I was using your name as a launching board into this as you are a gentleman junkie and uh, could win this um, off-grid knives camp kitchen knife. Um, look at this thing. It looks like a Hudson Bay knife. Uh, from the old fur trader days. Eugene Page says, I trust ProTech. Yes, that is a great one. I didn't think of ProTech, uh, but uh, knowing Dave Wattenberg, I mean, I don't know him, but I've had a one hour conversation with Dave Wattenberg and he's a very, very cool and nice guy. And um, uh, yeah, I would imagine that that you could uh, send them anything under warranty and they would hook you up and just be cool. Uh, Benedict Doty, nice to have you here, Benedict. Good evening, all, he says. Well, good evening to you, Benedict. Daniel Huff, good evening, Bob, Jim, and fellow junkies. Uh, well, Daniel, it's good to have you here. Dennis McKee says, Essie. Definitely. Essie, to me, Dennis, uh, Essie Knives, yes. Essie Company, I don't know, they seem mysterious to me. Uh, and, you're, and you might say, they're only mysterious, Bob, because you've never actually looked into them. And if you said that, you'd be right. Uh, I haven't, uh, but the, with the Randall's adventure training and the, and the lineage, and I, I'm just confused. I need to, I need to look into it, but yeah. I'm sure they're easy to reach, right? They're right in New York. Uh, Blade Ogre says, hello, all. Well, hello, Chris. Good to have you here. Uh, oh, tops for sure. Dennis, I'm with you on tops. No doubt. I love tops. Split and slices says this was a fantastic interview with Bob T, uh, this past Sunday. Well, thank you so much, Byron. He's, uh, you know, hard hard to miss the target with him because uh he's he is who he is and you ask him a question and it's bound to be an interesting answer because he's led an interesting life and uh, a, a lot of that has been uh birthing this thing that we love so much this is going to sound bad for a sec sorry oh it wasn't so bad scarboy nice to have you here scarboy uh, I just got my Compliance Edge DCK Double Edge, and I love it. Oh, yes, that is a cool one. Uh, that has been on my short list for a long time. And uh, is yours bronze? Or I think this last release had some sort of uh, special treatment or a special. I can't think of what it was. Uh, did he do the pineapple? I know he also had like a Tonto release at the same time. And sometimes he does these cool sheaths, but I can't. Tell, tell me the finish. I'm, I'm interested. Uh, Aberdeen, and, and, and in your comment, say the compliance edge was because otherwise, at this hour, I'm likely to forget what we were talking about uh, without that little reference. Aberdeen Blades, nice to have you here. Butterfly with the knife. Love that. Uh, two more new slippies dropping from Rosecraft on Monday. This is exciting. The Obed Creek and the Savage Creek. Anyone planning on buying one or both? Uh, I would like the sow belly. Uh, the I gotta say the um, the the gun stock jack looks like the blade to handle ratio is not going to be pleasing to me. Whether it's the 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 width of the blade or the length, I can't quite tell. But pictures, I'm kind of like uh, probably have to have it in hand to know. But that sow belly uh, single bladed trapper, most definitely the green one. I really like that. Uh, I have the, we're going to talk about this in a second. I have the new Cane Creek and this is a nice knife too. Aberdeen Blade says, I choose Spyderco and LT Wright for reliability. Now, are you talking about the product or are you talking about the, the product and the company? Like how they back the product or how they, you know, Spyderco, I mean, despite what I've heard about certain personality uh personalities there uh everyone there i've ever met uh, especially mike janich are super cool uh i've never met any of the glessers or pretty much anyone else uh but uh very cool and it seems like the company really stands behind what they do and that they are genuinely interested just look at the mule team series 40 blades 40 knives in with 40 different blade steels 
Um, and this time it's that high impact ceramic. So they care about research and development and, and, and con their constant quality control and all that stuff. Spiderco is, is pretty much beyond uh, re reproach. An American father, nice to have you here, sir. Uh, since the very first time out with a lion steel, I've been putting them through the paces. Never let me down. That's a that's a um, a classy choice. Uh, I not just because it's Italian made, but no. Uh, but I love the crown spine. I love the the I don't know the little flourishes on Italian made knives. They're just a little different, and I like it. Like like I don't own any of these, but the giant mouse knives all have those little flourishes and I don't know, they're very pleasing. So I could see how some of these lion steel fixed blades that are getting a lot of really positive press would be awesome there out in the woods. EDC, good morning from Wales. Well, good morning to you. You know, uh, my wife is part Welsh. That's right. Uh, so, but we have, we have not been there yet. So I look forward to that. So very nice to hear from Wales, EDC. Uh, good to have you, David. Uh, good to have you here, David, on Saturn, perhaps. Uh, Tops Cold Steel SE. Keep me coming back. Yes, yes, and yes. Uh, I would say in, in my order, it would be Cold Steel Tops. And I actually don't have an SE. I have a kind of an SE. It's kind of, I mean, it's an RTAC too. And to me, it's a, it's like a, the proto SE sort of. Uh, Doug Bowl, nice to have you here, sir. Hi, Bob. Hope you're in good health. I am in, in I am in good health, Doug, and I hope you are too, sir. Um, I am I have nothing to complain about. Stephen Clayton, aka Popeye. Good evening, knife junkies. Good evening to you, sir. Stephen Clayton Jr. I'm sorry, sir. Uh, Will B says Grimsmo and Spider Co. Top my list. So uh, let me ask you this, Will. I know you you have that Grimsmo Norseman and you carry it pretty much like all the time. Uh, have you had to ever send that back or deal? Uh, or, or have any dealings with Grimsmo knives that would lead you to believe that they're an awesome company for customer service? Curious. To me, they seem like they would be. It seems like all, all you know, those kind of companies uh, really want to make sure that their product is not only top notch when it leaves, but top notch, you know, after it leaves when it's come in for spa treatment or what have you. Five Door, good to have Five Door with us here. Uh, greetings, Bob, Jim, and Junkies. Well, Five Door, always a pleasure. Uh, Blade Ogre says, LT Wright and GEC are my two most trusted companies. Cold Steel is a close third. Yeah, okay, so Spiderco, yes. Cold Steel, yes. Uh, I feel that way about Emerson. Emerson Knives. I haven't had to do, like I said, warranty, but... I know from now, uh, I mean, I know what I'm going to get with an Emerson pretty much every time. And uh, I know that it's going to go through an adolescent phase that I'll have to deal with if I'm, if I'm buying it brand new. That's fine. That's fine. Some of the best things you have to kind of go through hell before you get to heaven. Uh, to quote, who is that? Joe Walsh. Uh, T. Kell knives and Crudo knives. Definitely T. Kell knives. Let me show you this. This is the knife uh, I am making with T. Kell knives. I say I am making. I am not making. I designed, he tweaked, and we are making. Uh, no, no, no. He is making. <laughs> uh, this is called the Agent 001. There are three other blades that he designed for this handle. Uh, this handle um, is uh, uh, a version of something I sent him. Actually, what I sent him looked a lot like a compliance edge, actually. Uh, so we, we definitely changed it. And how he changed it um, made it really ergonomically uh pretty sweet i've been walking around with my with my handmade gaffers tape and paper sheath uh and practicing like how it feels in hand and um it feels awesome and it's the same size here i'm getting excited uh it's the same size as the nighthawk which is something i care the night stalker which is a knife i carry uh just about as much as i carry the nova one I carry the Nighthawk. And so I wanted this to fit in the same footprint because I knew that it's an easily carried knife. And uh, yeah, I trust TKL knives as well. <laughs> uh, I, I talk with Tim a bit and uh, he's an awesome dude and, and they're blowing up. Uh, James Moore. Nice to have you here, James. Not sure about trusted knife companies. 
Uh, but the knife channel I trust the most is the knife junkie. Oh, yes. James Moore. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Putting wind in sails, James Moore is. Benedict Odie says, LT Wright. I need to get my hands on an LT Wright. I want something. Are they the ones who make the gunslinger Bowie? Is that them? The gun fighter Bowie? Something like that. Groundhog 83. Nice to have you here, Groundhog. Spartan and... Oh, how do you say that? Klutzli. Klutzli. <laughs> Uh, from Switzerland. Both are trusted, in my opinion. Spartan, definitely. Uh, got a new Spartan to show you shortly. And Klutzl, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, but uh, I've never experienced their knives. Northern Knives, good to have you here. What's up, Bob, Jim, and Junkies? Well, you know, just, just hanging out, having an awesome evening. Uh, Ketmuk Nessard says, good evening, Bob, Jim, and Junkies. Well, Ketmuk, Always nice to have you here. Pedro Armstrong, howdy, howdy. Hey, Pedro, how you doing, man? Uh, Five Door says, most trusted Chris Reeve knives, uh, Great Eastern Cutlery, and Swiss Army knife. Yeah, uh, Victorinox, like, have you ever seen a bad Victorinox? Who is it? Who is it? Um, hmm, what's his name? Slip Joint Sawyer, uh, British guy. I love his channel. Uh, and yeah, he's slip joints and he's been in a Swiss army knife phase that sort of uh, got me into my Victorinox phase quite a bit. And something he always brings up is you never, you never get a bad quality control Victorinox. It's just, it just doesn't happen, uh, which I think is cool. And I would say emblematic of, or yeah, emblematic of the Swiss, right? They're very precise people. And then here you say that's racist, Bob, but I say, the Swiss are precise. Uh, Daniel Huff says, uh, it's sort of hard to pick the most reliable knife company. However, it ain't hard to, or I ain't hard to please, really. If it holds, if it cuts, holds an edge and isn't hard to sharpen, I'm satisfied. Okay, wait, wait, Daniel. Daniel, are you not, are you saying that you do not have to have, well, yes, those, those things, yes, for just for the basics, but you don't care about just the basics. You're here on a Thursday night watching you know, knife uh, and participating in knife talk. So there's obviously something more than just those humble qualifications. There has to be something. It grabs your eye, grabs your heart. Um, what is it? There's got to be an aesthetic thing or something. Uh, let me know. I know that there's something more. Uh, Ketmuk says, I agree with Aberdeen, uh, Spiderco and LT Wright. Yeah. Okay. All right. So what LT right should I get? Someone suggest an LT right, knowing what my tastes are, uh, say leaning towards, um, um, leaning towards the Marshall, shall we say? And I know that's not where that company uh, really where their bread and butter is, but I'd, I'd be interested in what you would say. Ketmuk says I also trust Essie because of their warranty. Okay. All right. Cool. Uh, that's kind of what we were going for. What What are the you know, what are some of the ways they back themselves? Jacob Cummings. Nice to have you here, Jacob. Good evening, junkies. Jacob here from South Dakota, South Dakota. I've been there too, again, when I was 10 years old. So that was a long time ago, long before you were here, but uh, it's so good to have you here from South Dakota. And it's a reminder. I need to, we need to get out and check out this awesome country we live in. If you live in the United States, it's like living in a bunch of different countries uh, because of all the different land uh, land types and different local cultures. So explore your nation. Fernando Salome says, Spiderco tops zombie tools. Dag Nabbit, you know, zombie tools, uh, they keep popping up. Uh, and today I saw them. I mean, they've been around a long time and I sort of forgot about them uh, because I sort of left that phase of my collecting, uh, which was swords for a while. Um, and they keep kind of popping up recently. Scab had one today, a big, long um, recurve. It looked like a giant um, kukri. Looked beautiful, but like sword size from Zombie Tools. Scarboy says, on the compliance edge, uh, thank you, uh, you old fart. Uh, it's Blackout and Jolly. Oh, nice, Jolly Roger. Yar. That sounds awesome, man. Though I'm tempted to get maybe one more. Why not? He's a small maker. Hey, I could help you justify that purchase all day long because he's a small maker and, you know, we got to, we have to support these people. 
um, you know, uh, DB Blade Co., uh, Dylan Grace Blade Company. He just he just uh, made his last batch of knives and has been selling them. And I'm I guess he's out of them at this point. But it was sad to see that. Like I have one of them that I got from him at at uh, Blade Show uh, one year. I've had him on the show a couple of times. Great guy. Very interesting. Very interesting process. Cool and unique product. He's going out of business and uh, at least for knives and moving on and um, ah, it kind of hurt, hurt, hurt to see. So buy another compliance edge, buy two more compliance edges. Why not? Will B says, oh, I mean, why not? You say because they're four hundred dollars or whatever they cost. Well, save the money. And instead of getting uh, three Wii knives or or, you know, whatever it is, just wait and get that. I approve. And, and I'll, I'll write you a note if you need to show it to your wife or significant other. Um, Will B says a bit of top, a bit off topic, but for flashlights, Olight has been helpful anytime I've reached out to them and they always respond so quickly. Yeah. they they have an army of marketers. Presumably, or maybe they have one person who fights like an army, but they seem to have, um, whenever they have sales, everyone's got Olight videos up. I've done a few. Um, I don't think I was as like enthusiastic about it and they don't send me stuff anymore. Uh, they, they sent me, I think two bet, two batches of stuff. And, uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe they just didn't get enough click throughs, uh, from, from my videos, or maybe they could just tell, uh, that I have to muster enthusiasm for, uh, the flashlights they sent me, but I, you know, I, I had genuine enthusiasm for the knives they sent. Uh, good stuff they're making there. Deacon, nice to see you here, Deacon. Uh, that's the, is that the um, dog from the record company? RCA or whoever that, who was that? Deacon says, CRK, uh, Chris Reeve Knives for All Around Trust. Spider Co. for trust in quality. He treats on their steel. That's what I was getting at before when I was talking about the Mule Team series. All those steels and all the research that goes into learning how to grind those steels, how to heat treat those steels. Uh, yeah, you can tell they care. Pat D's nuts. Nice to have you here, Pat. Uh, I made it, he said. Yes, you did. You know, it took me weeks and weeks not to giggle at, at the name Pat D's nuts. I just think it's clever and awesome. Will B says, I haven't had to deal with Grimsmo, but everything I've heard about them, especially from Mike Emler, has been very positive. And I have no doubt they would do anything reasonable to make it right. Cool. Yeah, that's that's kind of what you expect from a company who uh, is run by uh, brothers or a couple of people and every knife goes through their hands. You, you would imagine that those, those people would want to make it right. There's a, a different connection. Okay. Is it Bobby Knoth or Bobby Knoth? I'm going to say Bobby Knoth. Nice to have you here, Bobby. Uh, Blackheart knives seem pretty sweet. Blackheart. Blackheart. Fixed blades, right? Blackheart knives. Why is this? Why am I drawing a blank? I, I, I know I know them, but I can't think of them. Eugene Page says, plus Emerson caters to us left-hand freaks of nature. Yes, sir. All right, Emerson, I want to... Hey, what's up, Mike? We have Luck Knives with us. Always making cool stuff. And he's got a wicked collection. You've got some really, really cool knives. Uh, Kat McNesshart, Bob, you borrowed my LT right Northern Hunter. That's right, Canadian belt knife. That was awesome. Actually, I don't, I don't need it to be like a, a big buoy knife. I could go for for that Canadian belt knife. That was, that was awesome. With the uh, natural micarta handle. Uh, Robert Strebin, nice to see you here, Robert. Hey, Bob, and all you knife junkies out there, hello to you. Uh, with all of this Emerson talk, I think it might just be time, Spartan Cold Steel and Condor, says Sordex, to get to a pocket check. So, over here, I had the uh, Emerson TK. Uh, wait, let's see. Uh, TK1. Uh, no, TKF1. Sorry. I'm not used to saying that. TKF1. This is the um, Tim Kennedy 1 folder. Tim Kennedy, the uh, kind of a Renaissance badass, uh, Renaissance man. Um, let's see. Uh, Green Beret and also goes around 
training other armies. I guess Green Berets do that. But even in his retirement from the Green Berets, he does stuff like that. Also MMA guy, also national. Or, you know, he was a UFC fighter. A um, He's a national. You, you guys know who Tim Kennedy is. Uh, so this is the knife. He came to Emerson and asked Emerson to design him something. Uh, and skinny, long, stabby clip point is what resulted with a nice big finger guard. I really dig this knife. It's my first Emerson besides the Elvia, which kind of doesn't count because I remedied that uh, with an aftermarket option. But this is the first knife from Emerson that I've ever had without the um, wave. And it's a nice, I like it. I like it. Uh, not that I hate the wave. I love the wave. And as a matter of fact, getting an Emerson without a wave seemed weird. Uh, but I immediately took to it because I've been appreciating my uh, washer folders more recently. And either this was made especially nice and didn't have a break in period, or my buddy Ian, uh, with whom I traded to get this, uh, broke it in. Uh, and it's nice, you know, like uh, I haven't had to deal with anything that I've usually have to deal with with a new Emerson. So, uh, yep, dig this thing. Um, very sharp. And I love that point. Dig the wedge. And there's a slight dip here uh, as if to, to be a swale for the thumb if you're really powering onto something. But a uh, very nice uh, 3.8 inch blade there. Uh, next up in my pocket, I had the new uh, for February 2024 Jack Wolf Knives Midnight Jack. Had this in my pocket, and uh, this will be going live tomorrow, uh, the 16th of February, uh, at all of the dealers that sell Jack Wolf knives. And they are legion. He has uh, wrangled, not wrangled, what's the term I want to use? He, he has brought into his fold so many dealers, so there are a lot of opportunities for you to grab these knives. Uh, this one has that contoured twill carbon fiber. Very, very nice. Let's see if I can get that sucker to focus. There we go. Hand rubbed S90V blade with a long pull. I love the long pull uh, uh, right there. And a, in a satin ground uh, polished swedge on this hand rubbed blade. Looks wicked cool. Nice big uh, sharpening choil, bigger than the last one. And then dark blasted triple fluted bolsters. I love this knife. Very classy. This is like the knife you take to the opera. Uh, it also comes in uh, a swirly um, acrylic and jigged titanium and two different uh, other, uh, another carbon fiber and something else. I, I always lose track of these. Uh, there are fi five of them, five different options, I believe. Five or four. I don't know. You'll see. Tomorrow, you'll see. I think you need to go get one of these knives because if you didn't get it on the first run, uh, this this is going to go fast. This was probably his most uh, popular knife, Ben Belkin's most popular knife on the first round of iterations. So definitely get yourself a uh, Midnight Jack. Or don't, but... If you like those kind of knives, you'll be glad you did. Uh, just like this next one, this is the Cane Creek Jack from Rose Rosecraft Blades here. Uh, this is based and inspired, based on and inspired by a Sheffield made folder. And I love it. It's got that Coke bottle. Um, Coke bottle, what do you call that, profile, uh, which is intended to accommodate uh, the spring here so that it can be flat on the inside instead of having the bulge on the inside in the, of the blade well so that the blade can sit deeper in the handle. Really nice layer G10. It's a nice change of pace, that G10. I really like it. I mean, I never get tired of bone, and um, Rosecraft does bone great, but I like that G10. Uh, Rosecraft Blades logo right there on that back bolster. This is a great little knife. And I say little because for some reason from the picture, 
I thought it was going to be larger, and I'm glad it is not. I'm glad it's the size it is. It's small, light, svelte, and uh, like I said, based on a British blade like this one here, the Lusahatchee Jack is also based on a British style uh, clip point. And I love that with that descending, deep descending belly. Uh, we get something similar here with the uh, with that belly, and also you have that aggressive swedge. Love that swedge. Very, very cool. Okay, uh, and then I had, this actually didn't make it onto the official list, but I've been carrying this a lot. This was definitely um, giving me emotional support today. This is the Iridium, the Kershaw Iridium, and it's got the best action, really. It has the best action of any bar lock, bar none, in my collection. And every time I use this, I check, is this loose? And it's not. It's tight. It's as you know stable as the day is long in that handle, and yet it has the most free action of like pretty much any bar lock knife I have. Okay, uh, that was in my pocket, but um, this was my fixed blade, and like fixed blades recently, this was not on my person. Um, I did not carry a fixed blade on my person today. Uh, but this was close by. Let's see. This is. There you go. Uh, that's the Station 9 Partisan. And I, I'm really digging Station 9 knives. This one, of course, here is based on an improvised French World War I trench knife made from a butcher's knife. And uh, I presume that that swedge is part of the Im improvisational weapon aspect of it. Nice long swedge makes it uh, a thrustier blade than it would be otherwise. It has pretty much a continuous belly, though from here to here, even though it curves very, very gently, uh, you get what is essentially a straight portion. Very nice and even um, canvas micarta handle here. It looks like it should be burlap, because the, but that's canvas. Big, big weave canvas. I used to do a lot of painting and uh, yeah, I should have been making my card. <laughs> I would have been better off. Uh, I put a Ranger band right here on the middle just for a little bit of gription. I saw um, one of the two guys who owns the company. I think maybe it's Tony Lopez uh, has, has some of that grip tape on his um, actually on his sear model. So I did the same thing here. Monkey see monkey do, but that it's actually a great, um, a great addition to this knife. It, it just, yeah, I like the grip. All right. This is what I had on me. Let me know what you had on you. Drop it down in the comments. Let me know. Are you carrying a fixed blade knife these days? Uh, I, I know some of you do. I know some of you carry multiple fixed blade knives. If you don't carry a fixed blade knife, um, which many don't tell me why. Or uh, do you have any interest in doing so, but just haven't gotten around to it? Professor EDC says, well, Professor EDC, so nice to have you here, man. I saw you had that big, uh, what is it? Uh, um, mm, I'll think of it. Satu? Was it a Satu? Anyway, you had a, a, a nice, big, chunky knife in your uh, videotape. Uh, Professor EDC says, Bob, Jim, fellow junkies, brothers, hope everyone is doing great. Glad to be able to drop by. Leave a like and say, hey, Professor EDC. Hey, man. Um, uh, Satu, I think it was. Grayman, right? Gray. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. We'll just leave it right there. Daniel Huff says, well, if I had to nail it down, I'm going to say case. Very nice. You're not going to hear a lot of people say that. Uh, they appear to have stepped up their game a notch. I would agree with that. Uh, in fact, one of my carries today was the brand new mini Sodbuster. Oh, the Sea Dragon. Oh, 6137 stainless steel. Now, this that Sea Dragon scale. Uh, so this is a new collection, a uh, new series with a, uh, a dyed jigged bone that ranges from like aquamarine to deep like indigo blue, if I re recall correctly. It's really beautiful. Uh, Blade, Blade Ogre says that case Sea Dragon Smoky Mountain Knife Works exclusive is nice. Bought the biggest one, the Folding Hunter, in that today. Oh, very nice. 
Can't wait to see those uh, up on your Instagram. Jesse, nice to have you here, Jesse. Is that crow? Uh, yeah. Good to have you. That crow is menacing. I like it. Uh, Splitting Slices says, pat, smack, push, thwack, kick, knock, punch, slap, stab, or kick, please, the like button. Well, Byron, thank you, sir. I appreciate your um, advocacy. Aberdeen Blade says, Rosecraft French Broad Jack. So I have the French Broad Jack right here. Um, and this is the one um rosecraft blades a th this is now out of print they're not making this anymore or at least not like this uh, they'll probably hopefully maybe they re-release it in a different bone or a different handle material but a very nice knife i really like it but this is the one rosecraft blades that i have in my uh, now sub collection according to dave uh of five that is not great i mean the, the the functionality the blade is awesome uh the spring all of it is great except for the fit even the finish is great but the fit is not good and uh, right down here you can see the um, bone is pulling away from the handles you can feel the transitions like big steps on both ends this is just kind of a lemon in those terms not in terms of being an awesome workable knife that i'll keep and use you know for a long time, no doubt, uh, but um, it it doesn't reach the level of of near perfection that the other four that I have do. Will B says I have two TKL knives and won both of them. Nice. One was a blem uh, that didn't meet Tim's exacting standards, and I've carried it for weeks and haven't found a thing wrong with it. TKL is trusted as well. Okay, tell me which ones you've got, man. Will you're leaving me on tenter hooks, brother? I, I love his knives. I, I have um, the Night Stalker and the MR1. The MR1 is the Night Stalker, except sharpened for Pical. And, and then I have the Combatant, uh, which is a great small EDC. And then I have the um, Guardian. So I have four of those. And actually, Tim gave me one of those, the Guardian. Have a knife day says uh, that like button doesn't smash itself. No, it certainly does not. But don't think it hasn't tried. Uh, Bobby Noth says California Knife Company, Rich Robinson Fixed Blades. California Knife Company. I don't know them. So I'm going to write them down. I'll check them out. California Knife Company. Uh, okay. So is this someone that you trust? Uh, and they have sweet knives. That's that's what I'm presuming. All right, this is what Will B had on him today. He had a Grimsmo Norseman, Hinderer XM24 Battlefield Pickup Sponto, Ferrum Forge Allurus, Benchmade Rift, Kaiser Big Lighter XL, the Axial Shift, the TKL Night Stalker CQC. Okay, very nice. The Olight Warrior uh, Nano and the Keras Bolt V2 Pen. Uh, the Night Stalker. CQC, uh, close quarter combat. Is that the thicker one? I believe that's thicker than the normal gauge. I know that, that he does one that's a little bit thicker blade steel is what I'm getting at. This old sword, today's carry included Black Rock Creep Pical Fixie. Creep was a good name for that knife. Uh, Vostied Thornton. Vostied Thornton Button Lock. Oh, that's the one designed by... Um, Wayne, right? Wayne Sharp World, Kaiser Mystic, D Rocket Zulu out the front in Ultima. I forgot you had that. That's a cool knife. The Hogue Sig three uh, K three twenty Tonto, Viper Knives Keeper two. That's a cool, very cool shaped knife. And the Night Court EDC three fifty. Uh, I want to talk for a second about uh, your Black Rock Creep Pickall Fixie. Uh, you should check out uh, Dave's page. This old Sword Blade reviews. He has. A post of it up today but i just want to show uh something here so it is a um it, it, it's a pical style blade but it's also a it's like a reverse tanto in profile it's like a recurve reverse tanto in profile uh but at the tip portion it's ground like a dagger it is so cool the the way it's swedged um it's it's like a curved Pical with the edge sharp on the inner edge sharp 
and then it reaches a point and then it cuts in where the reverse tanto part is and then where it cuts in it it comes to the point like a dagger it's so cool <clears throat> very cool well ground uh knife you should check it out go to dave's page and check that out congrats on the tkf1 well thank you sir uh uh, yeah, when it's made out of metal, then we can, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll <laughs> I can't wait to show it off. Uh, but so this will be double edged and I guess we'll talk about making a single edge version of it. Cause, uh, for the faint of heart, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, and then here we're going to add some jimping, uh, but pretty much this is, this is the design. A uh, cool thing about this, uh, uh, you know, minus the, um, or I should say plus the grenade grip. Uh, grooves in there where the hell is my oh here plus these grooves so these appear on all of his knives and they really are nice uh, for grip so that those will be circumnavigating the handle and thank you i appreciate that i'm excited uh stephen clayton jr says rem alliance scourge mini tanto rem alliance scourge mini tanto t kel night stalker cg what's the cg again piranha uh that's a cool fmf accomplice mr1 i don't know the accomplice what's the fmf mr1 is a great one uh regiment blades low vis pro colonel blade okay i know which one that is uh riot xo k uh that that riot exo karambit is cool the crudo sd5 lte snag bit i remember that one and the civivi orthos okay oh i like how specific you're getting uh the piranha is a cool little tkel what's the fmf uh i'll think of that in a second and the accomplice uh you know um jared neve also is working on a knife with uh with uh, Tim, actually, they've been working on it longer, but but I think there are uh, more uh, complications due to the design. Uh, but if you saw, if you were at the table at Blade Show, you you probably saw um, some version of that prototype. Uh, Blade Ogre says, carrying the clever girl, the blue and black bluck, uh, blue and black bluck, blue black buck sprint ops pro. Mech Forest Blue, Mech Forest Blue Phantom. Okay, Mech Force is a company I'm learning about slowly but surely. You showed me your Mech Force Blue Phantom. That was the first Mech Force I ever saw. And then um, one of our gentlemen junkies has a Mech Force in house here with me right now with Tashi Barucha, which we'll be mailing out this this week. I got to box it up. It's going to cost a fortune to send it's quite a heavy box um but mech force wow wow what a great knife that mech force was uh is mbk old guard uh that's monterey bay knives old guard swiss army knife swiss champ otter messer beekeeper tactile maverick bastinelli mako dino spike that's one that you made and the sleazy ogre that's one you designed and jason grant made very cool very nice uh carry as usual that's the thank you uh professor edc carried the grayman satu and the jack wolf knives midnight jack white storm yes very cool um you uh, i'm presuming you have all the handles uh all the handle materials doug bowl says which folder can you uh do you carry most often depends um this week oddly enough well okay here just uh recently i would say over the past uh six months probably the mystic the kaiser mystic I've just carried this so much i love the design and kaiser does such a beautiful job with with the building of it so uh, i carried that one a lot um but <clears throat> This one, uh, this one has gotten a lot of carry just recently. I sort of rediscovered this. I, I, I really, really wanted it, saved up for it, and didn't spend money on anything else. Finally got it and was like, oh. And then a year later, whatever it is now, <clears throat> I'm starting to really bond with this knife. Uh, so dig that. Um, I do bounce around quite a bit uh but i i do uh, like to say doug i do like to have um uh something that's close to four inches on me 
uh, in terms of blade length uh, all the time. Have a knife day says a 310 forge made cardigan style guardless coffin. Oh, dude. With a custom leather sheath with copper rivet accents. Also tip up modded OD green peel ply G10 scale Spiderco military. I didn't know you had a 310 forge made cardigan style <laughs> guardless coffin handle Bowie. That is often, you know, he, uh, awesome. He was just on the show um, uh, talking about, uh, you know, uh, it was really great to have him here. Um, talking about forging blades. I didn't know you have one of his knives. That's so awesome. Um, um, uh, Mike, splitting uh, is his name. <laughs> splitting Slices says, uh, Carrie is a TKJ Hogtooth Nova One. Great choice. Ohio River Jack, dual bladed. Those things are very stout. I like those double bladed uh, ORJs. Off-Grid Enforcer, XLRD. Um, the, oh, oh, XL with that red handle, red dawn, um, the off grid knives, all day necker got to handle the work tough gear, nomad bush crafter and the Ed soul crafts piranha V2. Very nice. Very nice. Ed soul. You're the guy who introduced me to Ed soul Ed Ed soul. That was a very nice, uh, very nice hookup there. Five door says eclipse Tonto. That's a hinderer. Of course, Swiss army knife cadet. Thanks, Bob. I finally succumbed after all to your Swiss army knife content. Yes. Uh, GEC 19 tiny Warren cliff. I love that little tiny Warren cliff. I wait, I have that 19, right? I have two tiny little Warren cliffs, the six and the, yeah, I, I don't think I have the 19. Daniel Huff says, today's carry was my old standards, Victorinox Adventure, and the Spyderco Endura K390, and the aforementioned Case Mini Sodbuster Sea Dragon. I do love Sodbusters. Um, I do indeed. But we're talking Case. Let me show you this one. Uh, I, I've This is a quiet hero, and I got this uh, not too long ago. Matisfaction, nice to have you here, sir. Evening, everyone, he says. Well, even to you, Fernando Salome. Because of you, Bob, I dig Station 9 too. Yeah, they have some really, they have something for everyone. They have a lot of uh, different cool knives there, though uh, no folders. But uh, so this is the Case Canoe, and this is the uh, CV version in that amber jigged bone. And I am, it's going to take me forever at this pace, but I am currently writing a short story that is loosely about this knife uh, and uh when it's done whenever that is <laughs> next year sometime uh it's just a short story but i don't know it's taking me forever to, to write it i will post it or let people read it if interested uh but i do like uh case especially you know some i forget who was saying that that they've been upping their game but i've always noticed their game is a little bit more uh up on their CV, their carbon steel uh, bladed knives, because they make fewer of them, and I, I think they require more attention. Uh, Robin Strebin, Robert Strebin says, hey, Bob, I have a question for you. I have three Victorinox. Two of them have Officer Suisse on the blade. What is this about? Uh, does yours have this as well? I don't know, uh, but they're both legit. Um, uh, I just noticed that, and then... Um, um, Slip Joint Sawyer, a good channel you might like, uh, was talking about that, but he wasn't he uh, in one of his videos. He didn't explain what it means, so I don't know. I have to look that up. I've I, I've kind of been meaning to check that out. Um, so uh, we will find out and we will let you know. Uh, you, uh, uh, but I've, I got to write it down or I will forget it. So, Officer Suisse question mark uh eugene page says a fox ryu is my current favorite fixed blade that's a sweet one also by ken vehikite of black rock knives uh he he um two years ago the ryu uh, which is a tanto like a japanese style tanto and then his monkey thumper a uh, really cool karambit uh got picked up by fox and one of them the monkey thumper was knife of the year, imported knife of the year, fixed blade, whatever, blah, 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 at Blade Show. I say blah, 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 because there are a lot of different categories and subcategories. Ketmuk says, today I carried my 
K-Paw Handmade Knives Buckmuck. Not sure what that is. Buckmuck. Something like uh, Vastid Nightshade and my Jack Wolf Knives Midnight Jack in Purple Haze. All right. Very nice. So, well, that's from the first drop. And that was probably, that model right there was probably the most uh, sought after Jack Wolf Knives from knife from that first run if i if if i'm reading the tea leaves properly anthony m nice to see you here anthony i didn't carry fixed blades every day until i found uh an ulti clip uh by far the best clip for carrying in pocket so the ulti clip is this one right here and it works like this so you pop up this and this is under spring tension well this uh, is this piece of metal is bent, and this piece of metal is bent, and when pushed together, they create spring tension. Uh, but this nestles deep in the pocket. I was just carrying this in the waistband um, for yeah, after work and dinner time and stuff, and this just locks in like that. I like the ulti clip. Uh, let me show you uh, my favorite, and you might you may or may not know this, uh, but the uh, where is it? the discrete carry concepts clip i really like these and they also go well in pocket and they come in shorter versions uh, you have uh, you have ones that are half of this size and they're pretty they are actually pretty discreet and this metal is so springy and so uh uh tough that I just love it. I love these. But all of these clips, uh, the ulti clips and the DCC clips, uh, they really make carrying fixed blade knives on a daily basis actually possible. Um, they, they really are the best solution for in-pocket carry or in the waistband carry, if you ask me. Now, the belt loop, uh, belt loop situation right here like this, uh, this is pretty good too. This is how I carried them for years. So this is in the waistband. This comes over the top and through the belt. But it's just not as clean and discreet as this because you can have this uh, in the waistband clipped to your jeans and then have your belt running over it. And, and you barely see that there's anything clipped under there. And that's kind of what I prefer. Ghost Keeper. Oh, there's a song that I love called Ghost Keeper. Uh, emotional support knife today was the CJRB button lock Feldspar. Oh, nice. Uh, that Feldspar is a cool, uh, just a very clean shape. And CJRB just knocks it out of the park with the button locks. Benedict Odi says, Bob, you might like the LT Wright Bandit or the Frontier Valley. <clears throat> okay, bandit sounds right about up my alley. Five Door says, I carried small fixed blades sporadically, but just don't enough to appreciate them like I do folders. Yeah, I could see that. Um, I kind I don't carry them as much or as ubiquitously as I do folders, but I still I I'm still in a phase where I like them better than folders. Uh, Anthony M says, also been really liking the Manix 2 Lightweight recently. Yes, uh, that's been my second knife almost every day. So, Anthony, I got I'm lucky enough to be given one of those by uh, by Shane and uh, uh, Edgy American. And I love that thing. It's an S110 and so nice. I uh, got some answers here. Jim, Jim totally hooked it up. Uh, this is about the Officer Swiss um, uh designation according to google officer suisse means swiss officer and is on the 91 millimeter and 85 ones as they are based on the old officer knife corkscrew and such okay yeah all right <clears throat> so the 91 millimeter um swiss army knives are the a locks most of the a locks models except for the cadet and then the 85 millimeter models are the smaller ones like the recruit and um the tinker small and okay so you'll see those on certain ones uh but though but then the 90 wait, wait i have this wrong so 91 millimeters are the regular ones the 93 millimeters are the large a locks okay so i had that wrong so on most of the most of the normal sized ones you'll see that huh. i didn't bring any over here they're all over my case now i need to 
I'm going to investigate that and see what I have and, uh, and see how that, how that aligns with what Google says. Thank you, Jim. Greatly appreciate that. Will B says, I have the Night Stalker CQC and Sapper. That's right. I remember you mentioned the Sapper and I got all angry and, and envious and jealous of that because it's so cool. Mattis Faction says, I've carried, uh, I've started to carry a Boros blade fixie. It's nice. Mm, I'm trying to think of what's Boros. Well, I got to check that out too. I, you know, it's legal to carry them. Most, mostly the, the hang up with fixed blade knives are that people think that because it's a fixed blade knife, it's like this, you know, dangling from your belt. You don't, it doesn't have to be this though. This is actually more legal than having it stashed hidden in, in a lot of cases. Stephen Clayton says, uh, I won a teak. Oh, you did. You won that. Yeah. I think you told me about that actually. Uh, I won the TKL Sapper. I carry it on my backpack. TKL Guardian arriving Monday. Very nice. Uh, and second, and two FLN about to ship with Raider and Night Guard on order. Oh, dude, you're going after it. Let's see. The Raider, I love that. The Night Guard is cool. That's the smaller version of the Guardian with the little karambit ham handle. What's the two? Oh, two FLN. That's about to ship that FLN. Oh, he was okay. All right. The FLN is the is the knife that Jared Neve and uh is collaborating on. And when I was talking to Tim Kell the other day, he was saying he had to hand sharpen each one of those with um with a wicked edge sharpener because of the angle, uh, the inside angle of that karambit blade. Um he just had to do them by hand. <laughs> and so that's cool. You're, you're getting extra, extra attention. Uh, Gary, Gary Jaroski or Garaz. I think it's Jaroski. That's what I'm going to say. And please correct me if I'm wrong. Gary says carrying my hinderer Maximus. Ooh, again. Is, so is this a double edge or is this the bayonet single edge? Uh, Gus Beck says, Oh, uh, hey, Gus, how you doing, man? What's up, Knife Junkies? Just got home from a long day at construction site. Uh, I carried the S45 VN Large and Cozy and the 3D Benchmade Bailout, two of the greatest workers ever. How cool is this? Gus is carrying his his Incosi Chris Reeve knives and his 3V Benchmade to the, to the construction site. That is awesome. You know, those are probably two of the most qualified and awesome knives for whatever he was doing on that job site, but would probably be the last two knives I would select, you know, to go out there with. So I, I, I admire when people use their shit. Will B says the CQC has the sharpened swedge. Uh, so it's double edged for the first half of the blade. That's right. Ah, oof. I think I need that. Anthony M says Jake, uh, Jacob creates chickadee. That's a great little knife. Uh, was a great starter knife for carrying fixed blades more often. Still carry mine very often. Anthony, do you carry it around the neck or do you drop it in the pocket? Uh, that's that's a great little three finger knife. I think I have a video on that knife from a couple of years ago. Uh, Pat D's nuts. Uh, I had my Asher Fixie riding Scout three o'clock. Okay. Uh, and a Protec Mordax in Magna Cut in the right pocket. My palm zesty sauce in the left pocket, along with a streamlight. Here, here's my palm zesty sauce. These things are cool. <laughs> uh, everyone got one for Christmas this year. Uh, left pocket with the streamlight micro stream USB. Well, hope you don't need to use any of those except for fun stuff. Jeff W., good to have you here, Jeff. Almost every knife maker I've met in the last couple of years have been amazing. Turner CNC. He's got three designs that I am burning for. Uh, that that we, we can talk about this in a second. CNC. Uh, Turner CNC tops auxiliary manufacturing. Dirk Pickerton top the list. Yes, all top quality. I, I've never actually... I tr I've invited the gentleman from turner cnc on he he's not uh he's not into it he's not into public speaking at least not when i did uh, I'll, 
I'll, I, I tell everyone who doesn't want to come onto the show that the invitation remains open, you know, forever. Um, but it, it, for that to work, it still requires a check-in because there, most people, even if they decide they're ready to do the podcast, won't reach out, you know, because it's not on their mind, you know, so it's on my mind. Uh, Phoenix 80. Nice to have you here. Uh, Shrade 141 old timer. Nice. Let me show you something. This sucker right here. This old timer. Oh, no, this is an Uncle Henry. Uh, similar, I guess they're cousins, but what a great knife this thing is. I think it was made in the 80s. <coughs> it's kind of hard to date these, but yeah, very nice with the bone. Uh, Gus Beck says, I've also been rocking the Microtech Amphibian at work. I like the Ramlock a lot, and the blade is a user and a looker. Pretty sweet knife. Yeah, I got to get that. What's holding me back? Oh, <laughs> I know it's holding me back, but I do have to get that knife. Oh, Frogman Field Knife. Okay. Uh, CG Combat Grade Outer Limitless. Oh, that one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. That Outer Limitless. It's like a, a clip point. It's not like a clip point. It is a clip point. One minute knife review. Nice to have you here. Oh, my God. Sorry, guys. Talk a lot. Breathe in a lot of air. Eat a lot at dinner. It's toxic right here. <laughs> one minute knife review says, hello, everybody. Hi, Bob. Or Bob, hi. Well, hi, one minute knife review. It's good to have you here. Chris Corliss. Hey, junkies. Hey, Chris. How you doing? Uh, checking in this evening after a long day of work and the first day of a new class. Currently carrying a Swiss Army knife super tinker and the new Alishowitz Les George collab Eck folder. Oh, that's so cool. That is a cool one. That's another folder. It's, that's another folder that's got me interested and excited. Um, there haven't been too many recently, but I feel like, you know, some things are starting starting to bubble up, uh, like that Microtech Amphibian and like this Eck folder. Uh, Stephen Michael Robert, nice to see you here. What's up, Bob? Hello, everyone. Oh, Stephen. <laughs> Steve, how you doing, man? What's up, Bob? Hey, how you doing, man? He's right around the corner from me. Sometimes you see names and you're like, oh, man, what's that? Seems, why is that? Oh, one minute knife review says today had a two son number, uh, some number full integral. T son, uh, two son only numbers their blades. They don't name them. So this is just a two son, some number full integral. Uh, small Sabenza 31 again this week and a ProTech runt. You know, uh, that two son thing is weird because two sons just kind of weird in general. Uh, really high quality knives, at least the two that I've had um, and made a while back. I know that they, in the eyes of some, have slipped a little bit, um, maybe have caught themselves. Uh, but the whole numbering thing uh, makes every knife seem anonymous. And then the fact that they have so many different knife models makes it, it makes them all seem anonymous. So I don't know. Something about Tucson. I like, but a lot about it leaves me cold. Pete Davidson says, on my lunch break and watching a bit of the show. Uh, Pete, if I haven't greeted you, yeah, you were here earlier. Well, it's still good to have you here. Uh, while having a quick cavity blast. Let's see. Let me start this again. This, this might be an Australian uh, turn of phrase. On my lunch break and watching a bit of the show while having a quick cavity blast and twirling a cold steel FXG Tonto. Be prepared. Uh, cavity blast eating sugar i'm guessing those fxg tonto i have the fxg um in my shower you know it's not this night you know but it's similar material grivery and uh it's the it's the thumb dagger you know where you put the ring dagger in cold steel would do a great job and it opens up soap packages pretty well craig vincent says evening Craig, evening to you, sir. Uh, 8010, so Cold Steel 8010, Titanium 8020.5, uh, the Cold Steel XL Voyager Tonto, the Spartan, the Titanium Tenacious. So is that is that a Tenacious with like, uh, uh, well, aftermarket scales, I'm assuming. Uh, the Shaman, Petrified Fish, uh, Mikado, the Rough Rider Large Cotton Sampler, and the Kershaw Culpepper. Uh, Culpepper, the Kershaw Slip Joints are pretty damn good, I got to say. Okay, the Cotton Sampler. I really wanted a GEC Cotton Sampler or some 
cotton sampler. And then I ended up getting the Rough Rider cotton sampler for whatever it was, 12 bucks, just to try it out. And I realized, man, what the hell is this knife? I mean, you know, it's cool looking. And actually, it looks kind of like a dinosaur and it looks kind of like a scalpel. Um, and I know that this was something like they would stretch cotton across this. And I don't know. It 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 has a very specific purpose. It's kind of cool that they are a thing, but I'd rather see a mushroom knife as a thing because I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, uh, weird knife is the cotton sampler. Uh, and I'm curious if you actually use it for anything or is it just kind of a, a fun thing to have? Joseph S. says, good evening. Well, Joseph S., good to have you here with us, man. Thanks for joining us. Matisfaction, I wouldn't buy a case without handling it first. Their QC hasn't been good uh, as of late. I, I would I would go so far, and, and this is uh, speaking as a case lover, I would go so far as to say their QC hasn't been uh, great for qu quite some time. Um, and um, yeah, I would agree with you handling them. It's just kind of impossible unless you order a couple of them and then send them back. I say impossible where I live because, you know, we don't have options. The one place you could get, no, there is a one place where you can get case, case knives close to me. Uh, but it's it's only in the brown del rin or in the amber jig bone and stainless steel. I see amber jig bone, I think high carbon steel, but it's in the stainless steel. And <clears throat> not a big fan of that. There was a place uh where you could buy them and then they stopped selling them. Uh, but they had some beautiful stuff, including some Tony Bowes models. And I think it was just a guy who worked there. It was a, a garden center close by. I think it was just a guy who worked there, had an interest in it, and sold it, and then that was it. Daniel Huff said, I love the ulti clips. I attached an ulti clip to the sheath of my Boker Lil Friend Mini Bowie, and it makes carrying it extremely versatile. Yeah, uh, one thing I do have to say, uh, and and this, this is a personal shortcoming, but the thing about the ulti clip that I don't like is that all of this action right here, stabs into my uh more than six pack uh abs what i'm trying to say is i don't have six pack abs and therefore whatever comes over my waistband when i'm sitting down or whatever this gouges and i know i could uh on certain knives it's not an issue you can mount it further down but um that's the one thing on the dis discrete carry if it's touching you it's just a rounded piece it warms almost immediately and it doesn't hurt but uh, a knife guy should be tougher than that and not give a crap, right? Matisfaction says, here in Arizona, we can carry anything in any format. Freedom. Love it. <laughs> Have a Knife Day says, I just pre-ordered the new CRKT Ritual Damascus. That's a nice looking one. Uh, might get it. You got to get it, Veft. You most definitely have to get Veft serrations on that. I really like the look of uh, the dark wash blade with the, the bronzed kind of uh, bolster. And then it has that really nice um, um, micarta. What is that? Burlap micarta. Pete Davidson says, I'm trying to pick up an outfit for this evening. I'm trying to pick out an outfit for this evening. Should I carry the Bagwell Gambler or the Desperado? What do you think, Bob? Well, geez, Pete. First of all, might I applaud you? I think you're just saying the Bagwell Gambler and the Desperado because you know that those are two knives that I can never. It's like, you know, if you've never been to East Berlin, you're never going to East Berlin. It's like if you don't have a Bagwell Gambler or a Cold Steel Desperado, you never will at this point because they're long out of print and no one is selling them. So I say you carry them both, buddy. Uh, no, I would say... Uh, on a Thursday night, you might want to carry the the bow the the Bowie knife, yeah. But it depends on what you're wearing, right? I mean, you're picking out the outfit, so <clears throat> consider that. But I say the I say the Bowie, the Bagwell. God, that sounds awesome. Uh, Split and slices says the only two knives I want to take on a construction project, especially around concrete, <clears throat> is a Milwaukee fastback and a cold steel drop drop forged. Hunter Fixie. 
the Milwaukee fastback, I get why the cold steel drop forged hunter fixie. Um, probably because it's one giant slab of steel, I guess. Uh, t uh, Kay Mason, nice to see you here. Uh, Kay, Tim, T. Kell, should have asked Jared, Neves Knives, to sharpen them. Yeah, yeah, right. Exactly. That's funny. Anthony M says, Chickadee is a great in pocket it is great in pocket it's become my weekend tradition to neck carry it and that's becoming one of my favorite ways to carry any small fixed blade i do like neck carry uh the only thing i don't like the only thing i don't like is when i have anything else around my neck and then you got too, too many things uh craig vincent's uh and what i'm saying like, like work id or i used to wear like a necklace with a crucifix and the and then, and then and then a neck knife and too much of that it's like you're you're gonna look like johnny depp and also be like be very stranglable and you don't want to be strang you want to be harder to kill as they say at station nine sorry about this guys every every thursday it happens craig vincent says last week i discovered i discovered cotton samplers uh it's possibly the goofiest type of traditional folder in existence and a very narrow design purpose, but I love it. And now I have three of them. Awesome. Do you have a great Eastern cutlery? Uh, I know that they did a run of them in the last couple of years, which is a rare thing. Cavity blast is <laughs> pooping. I'm like eating snacks. You're like, no, it's the opposite. Cavity blast. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Of course. Usually my mind goes to scatological humor. I'm surprised it didn't this time. Uh, Anthony M says, I usually don't catch these until the day after. Def going to have to make it these lives more often. This has been awesome, man. Thank you, Anthony. I appreciate that. It's been awesome having you. Well, okay, let's do it. Let's give away this knife. It's been 12 minutes, and uh, some gentleman junkies have a knife coming their way. George says, second, the mushroom knife. Oh, yes, yes. And you know what? You can keep the brush or make the brush removable because a mushroom knife that locks – with a brush that comes off is just a folding pical, and that's why I like it. Uh, Ketmuk says Mora and Oppenel have a nice mushroom knife. Yes, I like the Mora a lot. The Mora has a brush on it too. I guess that makes it a multi-tool. Uh, doesn't the Oppenel have the a brush also? I could be mistaken. Gus Beck says after a few bad weather and work days last summer, I realized I should. I should be carrying my best knives because the enjoyment factor will make any day so much better. If it's not a safe queen, enjoy using it. Yeah. And not only that, but you, you raise a good point. It's like, if you're out there and the weather actually does go bad, do you want to have some uh, shoddy knife or do you want the knife that you trust the most that you carry the least? You want that knife. Uh, Robert says, Hey Bob, I have another video request for you again. Since, uh, since I already asked about your neck knives and gas station knives. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, what about doing a video for your gentleman junkie knife collection sometime? <coughs> oh, your gentleman knives. Uh, I don't have too many gentleman knives. Really? Uh, I mean, except for my slip joints and maybe like, the tactile rock wall. I really don't have too many. Um, it's not a, it's a, uh, it's a style of knife that I appreciate and respect, but don't, don't collect and really don't uh, carry. Uh, but let me think about it. Cause now, now I have to, maybe I'll have to buy some. <laughs> it, it's, you know, I had to for the channel. Uh, okay. Let's see. X. Kato, ex Kato, nice to see you here. Uh, good evening, all. Today's carry is the Tucson Barracuda. I stand corrected, and the concept pickle, uh, prickle. Uh, so Tucson Barracuda. I said that they were all numbers, but in this case, it's not. It's name. Pete Davidson, fixed blade pocket carry is great and all, but unless the sheath is deep carry and the whole knife small enough, you will have lots sticking out of your pocket, like the Vero fixed blade. Uh, Joseph Vero, uh, man, master designer and engineer, but he, but his fixed blade knife in the front pocket seems like too much is sticking out, and it seems like it would be um, get in the way when sitting down. But I saw him at Blade Show and he was showing it off, and he he said it's great, he carries it all the time. So 
but I agree with you. Too much sticking out is too much sticking out. You don't want it grabbed from you. You don't want it used on you. You don't want it causing, you know, uh, attracting attention. You don't want it jabbing into your side when you sit down all the above. Craig Vincent says, I haven't yet found practical uses for the cotton sampler. Uh, but then again, I have to, I had a toy Fox Terrier with the same issue. And in the end, I just love him for what he was. Yes. Yes. That's a good way of putting it. And if you have a collection with interesting blades and stuff like I have for a long time, um, something like that is very welcome. I've kind of paired some of that stuff out. Uh, but yeah, the cotton sampler is a mystery. It's a, it's an interesting knife. All right, let's give this away. This is the beautiful, uh, um, uh, off grid knives, grizzly V2. And in the V in the reversioning of this knife, uh, the handle was made more slender, more contoured and smoother. Uh, it's, it's, way more of a pleasure to hold than the older one, the V1, which I have and love and have used a lot. These are the knives we bring on vacation with us because it comes in a great sheath um, and the place where we go at least, uh, you know, twice a year has terrible cutlery. Nice broad two inch, uh, two and a eighth inch wide blade. Uh, they fully flat grounded this time instead of a high flat grind last time. Um, and this is 14 C 28 N instead of D two, which is a nice upgrade and, uh, man, just awesome with this coating on here. Uh, you're not going to have any issues, uh, thin and slicey as the day is long, but you can still chop through saplings and stuff like that. Uh, though the company does not recommend it. This is more of a kitchen camp knife than camp kitchen knife. Uh, but let's give this away. I want to thank uh, our gentlemen junkies. I want to thank all uh, the the uh, patrons. Uh, but uh, thank you so much to our gentlemen junkies here. All right, you ready to spin that wheel? Uh, let's read these off here. We have Five Door, Ben Belkin, Byron Kennedy, Caleb Townsend, Cam Michael, Colin Maison-Pierre, Dante, Edwin Kahlo, Francis Valer, Gavin Kalaitis. We have Jay McConnell, Jesse Tellis, Jock's Knife, JVF, Martin Gamboa, Mr. VC256, Never Enough Knives 007, Scott Nelson, Sean Curry, Shane Miller, Tom Kim, uh, Will Boyer, and Northern Knives. Thank you, one and all, guys. Greatly appreciated. Uh, some of you have won more than once. Some of you haven't won. So let's uh, let's put it in the number, uh, in the random number generator. Let's spin this Wheel of Destiny and find out who I'm sending this to. In three, two, one, go. All right. It's always a bit of a tease. Let's see. <laughs> what do you know? The 14C28 and Sandvik Steel uh, off-grid Grizzly. This is yours, my man. I, I hope you enjoy it. I'm sure you will. Um, you can't carry it in those places you were telling me about, that's for sure. Uh, but I think out where you live, there's plenty of places to go out and enjoy this out in the wild where it belongs. So uh, this modern, I'm calling this a modern Hudson Bay knife. Uh, I think I'm coining that. I'm sure I'm the first to say that because I don't even think Kerry, the guy who designed this, sees it as that. But to me, this is like a modern Hudson Bay trapper's knife from Canada in the in the early days of the settling. And this is yours, sir. So happy to send this out to you. All right. Well, I'm going to put this over here and remember that it was Five Door who won that. And I want to show you some cool stuff that I've gotten here. Um, first one I want to show, Mattisfaction. I love gentlemen's uh, CEO knives. I use them as steak knives. Yes, the CRKT CEO is a good one. Ocaso Solstice. Yes, that is okay. I have three of those. Uh, the Ocaso Solstice. I love those. I, uh, I, uh, I had four. I gave one to my dad. He loves his too. Very light, super sharp, uh, and good looking knives designed by, by, uh, 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 Andrew Demko and then produced by Ocaso knives headed up by, uh, a former executive of, from cold steel 20 years, uh, as an executive from cold steel, uh, 
uh, taught Rick uh, a thing or two about knife companies. Got to check out Ocaso. We also did a podcast with him. Great dude. Great interview. Uh, very gentlemanly guy making some very gentlemanly knives. Pete Davidson says, just pulling your leg, Bob. The gambler and desperado stay on display until I can find doubles. <laughs> Just, just rubbing it in my face. I love it. But that's that's how. Wait, wait. Can you go back? I didn't finish the. Uh, uh, a trailmaster and vaquero will have to do for now. Yes, for sure. Hey, a great second place. Uh, Gus Beck says, "Thank you, Jim." Gus Beck says, "Man, I've been digging Station Nine for a while now, and really want to get one. Should I should I get the sear or the partisan or the little pointy paring knife one? Uh, the number nine. I the." Pointy paring knife looks awesome too. Um, uh, that is definitely a Tony Lopez design. He used to have uh, one that he handmade on his page, uh, and, and it was double edged. Where there's a swedge now, there used to be a secondary edge. Wait, where is it? Oh, right here. Here's the sear. I'll put them both down so you can check them out. I mean, they're they're two different knives. Uh, I I guess. Depends on what you're going to use them for, but um, I've seen the guys from Station Nine put these through all sorts of paces, um, whether it's like uh, into man-made materials or doing uh, camp stuff. These both seem to accelerate. This is a five and a half. It's about a five and a half inch blade. This handle is great. Uh, the sheath is excellent. A little tight, tight enough that it's causing that little wear mark there but not a big deal um and this is just impressive and kind of intimidating you know what i'm gonna tell you get the sear first uh i've just i don't know just on a whim i'm saying get the sear first i think overall it is it might you might get more use out of it just because of its size and its design um this one you know if you've got imminent danger if you got a knife fight coming up maybe go with this one you know you know you're on the professional knife fighting circuit and you got a, a big game coming up you're worried about check out the partisan professor edc says edc fixed blades for the front pocket creely knives mako that's just unbeatable although i also love the white river sendero yeah um uh the creely knives um Cedric Ineda was really into those, and and he did an amazing heat treat. Apparently, red raw redraw. Are you sure? Why redraw? You don't want it? What are you talking about? Uh, okay, Bob, I can't take that after winning last week. Okay, all right, okay, all right, Jim, can we do this again? Five door, you're a gentleman and a scholar. That's uh, that is that is very cool of you. All right, everybody, Five Door is is giving Gentleman Junkies a second chance because he just recently won. He's a lucky dude. He won again. And uh, he's also a very uh, noble and gentlemanly dude. So he's saying, no, I can't accept that, which he can, but his own code will not allow it. Let's do this. In, ah, sorry, in three, two, one, and then go. All right, let's see where it goes. Let's see where it goes. Shane Miller. All right, Shane Miller, you are the winner. Shane Miller, this is now yours. This off-grid grizzly, Shane, I'm sending your way. Uh, just be sure to let... Oh, wait, I should have your address on Patreon itself. If I don't, uh, I'll reach out to you. Uh but congratulations, that's yours. And and thank you so much, Five Door. Uh, that's a very awesome gesture. Uh, speaking of awesome, boy, how was that? Uh, that's an incredible knife. Wow, I'd sincerely be very happy with, with a redraw, though. Okay. Uh, all right, well, good to go. Thank you, man. It's appreciated. Mattisfaction says, it's okay to win several times. Uh, it'll be someone else's turn later on. Yeah. That's agreed. Um, okay, so let me show you this here. This is the Chieftain Sax from Cold Steel. I've been wanting this for a long time. I saw it for a fantastic price and went for it. Now, 
you look at it and it's sort of like a Bowie, right? This is a broke back sax. And I think that refers to this, this peak here. So a knife that was used in um, the Northern Europe, Western Europe, uh, England, all, all through Saxony. Um, a lot of people say that it was made, that these were actually just made from broken swords, but I, I don't buy that. Swords were not easy to come by. Only the, only the very, uh, in, in a, during a lot of periods of time, only the very wealthy had swords. Um, I don't think, and I don't think that that's how it happened. I think that it's a very simple blade shape, uh, just like every other blade shape, basically, except for some of the African blades. It's just a simple clip point blade, really. I mean, they just, you know, <laughs> make that line. It's not like broken. I know why people say that because some saxes have a more, uh, you know, more quick drop like this and it looks more like it's broken, but I just don't think that's the case. Uh, I think their evidence is anecdotal. And I think that my, um, my refute refuting it is anecdotal. I just kind of have a feeling just like they just have a feeling, uh, wood handle here, very nice wood handle with pretty intricate, um, carving that definitely works for grip. Um, you have a brass guard here and a nice big brass pommel. Um, the balance is right in front of the guard, about an inch and a half in front of the guard. And what's nice is that this wood handle uh, and the pommel have a nice heft. I'm going to come over to the main camera for a sec. That keep that keep this thing very light. I mean, it, it feels almost machete-like. It has a... Uh, a, a pretty thin um spot you know pretty thin blade stock but it it moves around really nicely is what i'm getting at uh, you i would expect i was expecting this to be blade heavy um but it's not it's just really nicely balanced uh the sax was uh do do everything sort of blade uh but this is the chieftain sax that's why it looks fancy uh so this is you know i'm i'm presuming this is more of a war blade uh and that's that's what I'm going with. I really like it. I really like the sheath too. These are made in India by Windless Cutlery. Windless makes a lot of uh, historical reproductions to pretty high fidelity. They they do a great job. I've had a, I have the 1917 uh, Bowie. I have the uh, Western and a couple of other knives made by Windless and uh, for cold steel, and they're excellent. Ooh, I like, says One Minute Knife Review. Uh, for a big knife, this is affordable. It's not, you know, it's 1075. It's not like super steel or anything. And it's, you know, it's a, it's a little rustic, but it's awesome. Anthony M says, oh man, that is so sick. Yes, yes. And, you know, I don't know. In thinking about it, it's like, what? well, why would you choose a, a buoy over this? And the only thing I can think of is... The swedge, you know, uh, a sharpened swedge makes makes it more, well, you um, useful in a fight or uh, what do you want to say? Uh, more utilitarian to have that uh, swedge there. Craig Vincent says, Bob, I love the Chieftain. So they make three different saxes. They make the uh, out the the um, the Chieftain sax. They have one that is like the out door sax or something the woodland sax and it's got a kind of a cool warncliffe blade meaning the the it, the blade looks a lot like a warncliffe you'd see on a slip joint with a long gradual uh drop to the point um and it's got a very uh rudimentary wood wooden handle but then they make this other one it's more of a scramma sax so it's larger than this it's like a small sword that is damascus steel and has beautiful fittings uh and it's like very expensive it's like 450 bucks or something uh counterweighted in the pommel yes yes definitely counterweighted in the pommel that's what makes the the tip so lively you know it's sort of like sword like in that way now last week or maybe two weeks ago someone says what is the minimum someone asked what is the minimum length 
uh, for a sword. And I said, oh, I think 13 inches starts a, sword, a short sword. Well, this blade is 13 inches, and it doesn't feel like a short sword to me. It feels like a big knife. Um, maybe if it were heavier, it would feel more like a short sword. But uh, these are more short swords, you know, and those are 29 inches overall. The Filipino, most of the Filipino knives or swords. So I'm thinking 13 inches is a big knife. Maybe you get to 15, 16 inches, and then you're in short sword territory. But the jury is out about that, and we will uh, we'll see about that. Let me put this away and show you the other sickeningly cool fixed blade I got this week. Eugene says, are the early model cold steels any better quality than today's? Uh, well, uh, uh it's hard to say man it's hard to say like i have uh, uh my trail master is over 25 years old i think and my tanto uh my original tanto is like i got it in, in the 80s you know when i was in high school and not necessarily better no i mean it's got brass the brass is tarnished the hole uh in the pommel was drilled just slightly off center and um you know the leather sheath, which was awesome, is starting to degrade. But really, I wouldn't say it's higher quality than today. Um, I don't know. That Tonto and that uh, Trailmaster, though, were made in America. Uh, so that was a cool uh, aspect of it. Or no, no, the Tonto was made in Japan. Uh, but anyway, uh, cold steels are, are I, I got to say, I have not had any uh, quality control issues with cold steel uh, recently. Um, yeah, no, I did. I did have one, but that was one that I bought on Amazon. And I think they give Amazon the punk ones. Anyway, I, I, I still recommend cold steel. I still think they're great, great product. Uh, Doug bowl says, Bob with the straight edge butcher type knife Bowie used in the sandbar knife, uh, sandbar fight shows the slicing power of straight edge. But yes, yes. Straight edge blade design, right? Right, that that Bowie knife was probably similar to more similar to this than say a big curved like uh, Western style. That straight edge. Pete Davidson says with Japanese swords, I'm pretty sure over 13 inches, uh, but under 20 is considered a short sword. The Wakazashi. All right, let me show you this. This is cool. Uh, Gus Beck says, "Oh, that's a Wakazashi right there. This is cool. I should." Sometime I'll take that down and show it off. It's got some, it's old. It's pretty cool. Uh, Gus Beck says, my most trusted brands as far as durability, serviceability, and function are Chris Reeve, Benchmade, and Spyderco. I've replaced Omega Springs, which is a drawback, but Benchmade can grind a blade. They sure can. And they're low-hanging fruit. They're easy to give crap to, but you got to respect uh they have put a lot of knives in a lot of pockets of a lot of law enforcement. Uh, all the cops I know love Benchmade. All right, uh, let me show you this. This is the uh, Bill Harsey designed Kukri, professional grade Kukri for Spartan blades. And I've been wanting this since Blade Show, I think 22. And um, Finally pulled the trigger on it. These are so reasonably priced. Uh, the Spartan Blade uh, Professional line or Professional Grade are, are very reasonably priced. Here's the one. Uh, this is the Les George designed Raider Dagger. Um, so in the in the same line, produced by K Bar, and uh, just really really cool. But uh, this I have not used yet, but I plan on taking this out back and and seeing how that cuts. This is a quarter inch of 1095 Crovan steel, something that K-Bar is very, very used to uh, may, uh, using. It's got a very stout tip and uh, some swedging and a beautiful recurve, but it's still kind of in line. That point is still sort of in line with the pommel. So um, also makes an intuitive uh, thruster. Um, a lot of people might think that a regular kukri isn't great for thrusting, but it is. It is actually great for thrusting. 
it's setting you up as if you're holding a pistol grip knife uh, for which you don't have to cant your wrist to get the point to go where you want it to go. Except the kukri, the pistol grip is <laughs> part of the blade too. So you just have to accommodate that. This uh, is more intuitive in that it, it, it thrusts more like a straight blade uh, because the point is kind of in the middle. The point isn't way down low, especially for a kukri. But you do have that incredibly deep recurve, uh, which is just going to shear through uh, anything you're swinging this through. Of course, with a recurve blade, as the re as the here, I'm going to come over to this uh, camera here. As the uh, blade follows the arc of the arm, it's that recurve is pulling material into it, and that belly is getting ever deeper, uh, ever fatter as it moves. So you're you're so the blade is basically ahead of the swing all the time cutting ever deeper that's why the that's why the uh gurkhas and the kukris uh the gurkha and their kukri were so feared uh in world war ii and I, did they fight in world war one I? I don't know but love this thing i i have a story uh a, a martial arts school i went to in uh new york had a uh seminar with a guy who trained in bando he was like a bando master and bando is a is an art that has been developed for the kukri i'm not sure if it is a distillation of what the gurkha soldiers use and that has been put into an art kind of after the fact or or i don't i'm not really sure the provenance of this martial art but it's all based around the kukri and the guy was telling I, I did i had to miss this seminar but i remember a friend of mine telling me after the fact that this guy was telling a story about someone that he had met an old timer who was in a um, they would do kukri rushes similar to a bolo rush that you hear the the moro soldiers or the moro fighters would do just a bunch of guys you know running like berserkers with their with their kukris into into a melee into battle and um this one guy old timer was telling the story about how he was running out and his friends were next to him and and they start swinging their kukris and one of his friends accidentally lopped off uh the left arm of the guy next to him just in swinging and going for the going into combat against the enemy he just sort of accidentally <laughs> cut off his friend's arm that's how powerful these blades are i mean uh, you can hit something, uh, in this guy's case, you can hit something you're not even aiming for uh, without even being in the full arc of your motion or, or the full power part of your arc and cut through. It's that recurve. And, of course, the the sharpened steel, the kamis, K-A-M-I's. Uh, the K-A-M-I is the guy who makes the kukri. And those guys, those kamis, not kamis, uh, know what they're doing with steel, too. And you better believe they did not have powder metallurgy technology, but they made it work. K. Mason said, is that part of their more affordable lineup? Yes, it is. It is. So they have a couple. Uh, before they before they teamed up with K-Bar, they, they started a line, or maybe right around that time. But this, yeah, this is... This is in in the line with the Harsey Fighter. This is like a very Harsey esque handle. And then there's the Harsey Fighter, which you'll probably see on this channel here soon because uh, I just love that. It's it's Harsey's version of the K bar, Bill Harsey's version of the K bar. So it's a clip point straight uh, fighter, is what they call it. And uh, I've seen. Many of our trusted voices taking this out and banging on it and loving it. So it's kind of made me want to do the same thing. So this, I'm not going to keep this one a safe queen. Not that I would consider it a safe queen, but you know me, I, I'm not taking these out and, and bashing on them just to do, just to bash on them. I have a couple I do, but on the whole, I like to keep them kind of pristine, right? <laughs> it's kind of nice. Nice to have. Let me show you the sheath here. Uh, it's it's unique. It's cool. It's so this is an injection molded polymer type sheath, and it's got a. You hear that click? Yeah. Let's do it in front of the mic. It's different. 
right? Because it's got a piece here that you have to engage with your thumb. You have to push it forward, push, push off of it. And it takes very, very little effort, but it locks into this top jimp here. And it's just like a thumb ramp on any Kydex sheath, except it's mechanical. You push it out of the way, it's a little spring, and boom, it pops out. I think it's cool. I like it a lot for this model. Uh, this model in particular. When this is hanging on your belt, by the way, this is a very sturdy Velcro loop. Very sturdy. And a lot of Velcro, so it's not going to come off. But when you, you can just drop this in, and it and it'll click in. I like it on this one. On the fighter, I, I don't like it. Um, I don't have the fighter yet, but I know it's got the same kind of sheath. And the reason I don't like it is because that's the kind of knife I would like to mount on my three o'clock on my right hip with the, with the edge facing forward. So I can draw it out and have it in reverse grip. Or even better, it's easier to draw a knife in standard grip with the edge facing forward because you reach for you reach around like this with this against the side of your body pull out the knife and you have it as opposed to coming down like this and then lifting it all the way out and bringing it to bear uh if you don't know what i mean let me show you let's use the partisan here so say i've got the belt the knife mounted mounted like this on my belt it's easy for me to pull it out defensively and use it like this. And that's a good thing. But also, if I want to draw it in regular standard grip, drawing it like this is actually way easier and more convenient, even though it doesn't look right to kind of put, than it is to have it in that standard sort of carry like this with the edge back and then lift it out of the sheath like this because you're bringing it all the way up to clear the sheath and then bringing it to bear. Whereas when it's like this and it's facing forward, you have it right here. It's all right here. All you have to do is be able to turn your hand like this. So I, I just, uh, I think that the whole reason I'm talking about this is that I think that that system on a knife that I'm going to want to draw like this is not going to be easy to master pushing that little button out of the way with the palm. It will require a different sheath. You can do the forward, but you can't do the reverse grip because of that lock. So I'm jury's out about it. I think it's kind of cool because it's just kind of different, but uh, less of an awkward chicken wing. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Less of that thing especially if you have a big knife on you um a big a big buoy knife on you or something uh, anything over five or six inches you don't you don't want to come all the way up here you just you can just kind of bring it out like that yeah i i always thought that and then i saw it confirmed by uh a guy who claimed to be a bowie knife fighting expert on youtube he agreed with me <laughs> kukri uh pete davidson says kukri can definitely thrust try it in reverse grip upward thrust i have a, ku a kukri house chukri that's a kukri with a fully sharpened clip point very pokey that sounds very cool very pokery that sounds cool i don't have anything from kukri house i'd like to, to get a uh, d bad one of his designs donnie b all day has a bunch of designs that he's uh derived from like the rambo knives and um, other co cool knives that he has uh manufactured by them over there in nepal i would like to uh, get my hands on one of them uh kept mcnessard says i love the handle on those no surprise i have the nesmuk oh that's right i forgot about the nesmuk same handle um different blade same handle great knives and and that nesmuk is the most tactical nesmuk looking thing i've ever seen like it looks like the kind of nesmuk you could run into battle with craig vincent says bob i have two very sharp and stout old hickory butcher knives 10 and 12 inches both of them seem to be very useful for a variety of purposes including both bushcrafting um 
and as instruments of malice yes hmm. uh they they uh old hickory has one that comes with a sheath and i was trying to find that I, i'm not sure if they still make that anymore but yeah i thought those old hickory butcher knives would make great outdoors knives you know especially for skinning um i mean you might have to ride up a little bit but yeah very cool uh those uh old hickory knives are pretty sweet uh huh me, oh yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, here's a new design that jim came up with unleash the blade within and it's got that cool sort of cy cyclopean skull with a with a sort of stylized um, gladius thrust through it. Very cool, uh, Jim. Oh, oh, and that's one of my favorite fonts, by the way. I love that font, that copper copper plate. Um, but anyway, Jim designs a lot of cool T-shirts, uh, all knife themed, and and they're over there at knifejunkie.com/shop. Check them out, and uh, be be a proud wearer of not only knife junkie merch but jim's really cool designs so check that out over there let's talk about the 110 folding hunter real quick uh this is something that caught my eye on knife news because the buck of the month um the the 110 i should say has gotten buck of the month treatment a number of times which is you know cool uh the buck 110 folding hunter is buck's most popular uh, knife since it's released in what 64 1964 um <clears throat> but uh the venerable united states uh company base company has a buck of the month uh program where they come out with one of their models give it special treatment make it a lot different from the you from the run of the mill and uh make them in limited numbers well uh this buck of the month is the folding uh hunter with check this out i love this magna cut blade oh no i'm sorry everything's a magna cut blade this is not a magna cut blade <coughs> it's actually a surprising s30v blade which is a little weird but it's an s30v blade it's not the standard clip point that you see on the 110 it's a drop point still hollow ground i love that long nail neck there that long pull nail neck uh you've got the uh, uh carbon fiber scales that are just super cool that marbled carbon fiber and so that makes this uh one of the lightest folding hunters because of that because of that carbon fiber i don't know what do you think of this is this something you guys are interested in do you like buck do you like the buck of the month i know i know a lot of you guys like bucks but uh do you like buck enough to get a, a, one of these bucks of the month i think i do um but not this one if i'm gonna get a 110 it's gotta have that uh beautiful classic 110 uh clip point blade i'm not i'm not i'm not about to get a drop point but i do like that long pull um so i don't know i don't know what you think ketmuk says that is an awesome shirt <laughs> yes it is indeed an awesome shirt doug bowl says jason patrick playing bowie in in the alamo carrying his his bowie in reverse grip and is more efficient wait wait wait, wait. let me ask you do you mean reverse reverse he was carrying it with the with the tip down or do you mean reverse like this because i know a lot of oh, oh. that swedge just uh did a number on my mic um i know that bowie fighters like to fight like this and use that swedge and then use the edge as like a heave ho kind of disemboweling thing um so is that what you mean or do you mean he was like this the whole time because that is a ah sorry that's a big ass blade to be walking around in reverse grip the whole time because you got to be careful who's behind you you got to be careful of your own legs seems dangerous to me Pete Davidson, yeah, but then again, it was Jim Bowie. Pete Davidson says, uh, give the Kukri house a go. They are a bit rough, but work well and are approved by my Himalayan buddies. Oh, cool. The only thing is, is I'm right now I'm I'm only interested in their Western designs. I love Kukri's. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. 
I know I've seen uh, I'm I know I've seen people use those kukris. Uh, Steve Price, I've seen him cut stuff with those. Craig Vincent says I picked up some marble sheaths for old hickories. Uh, the thing is, there are a lot of U.S. A made knife for the price. Wait a sec. I picked up the marbles sheaths for old hickories. Okay, okay. The one thing is, there are a lot of USA made knife for the price. Yeah. Well, that's cool that you could find sheaths that they fit. Greg Vanderslip, smack that like button. Thank you, Greg Vanderlip. I, I mispronounced your name. Thank you, sir. I appreciate that. Kept McNessart says, I don't have this buck of the month, but I have a couple of other bucks of the month. And I'm sure they are. I'm sure there are more in my future. Um, Splitting slices says Buck released both the 110 and the 112 in. Oh, that's right. In limited stealth runs of Magna Cut in January. Love the Buck of the Month program. Uh, but pick and choose. Yes, yes, of course, pick and choose. And that's why I was con confusing this one with the with the other one. Edge forward. Okay. Okay. Huh. So edge forward, but tip down. Yeah. So did it seem like he was fighting more efficiently with that? I mean, definitely uh, you get more power in a stab. You just have to be closer. But seems like at the Alamo, everything was pretty close. Kept McNessard says, uh, you know, I trust Buck. I've used them for almost 30 years. My dad had, had used them longer. Never had one fail. Yeah. And they still use 420, you know. And uh, still kick butt with it. Pete Davidson says, I miss those Buck Strider knives. I really wanted a folder, but got two fixed blades instead. Such a stout performer uh, that punches above its weight. Yeah. Gus Beck says, uh, Buck is very cool, and I like Buck of the Month. I'd buy the 112 Clip Point and S30V Nickel Silver Bolsters and Ironwood or Micarta. Yes. So here's the Buck 112, just your average model that they sell at walmart uh, except i put the little quick thumb stud on it these things are great they uh they really are one thing i disapprove of though is on the lightweight models or the th yeah the thin micarta lightweight models is that they change the blade shape they they turn it into a kind of a joyless clip point with the straight back with the straight clip i like this dramatic scoop i like the off kilter um nail neck or the nail neck that is parallel to that curved swedge um i like i like this blade better than the more modern blade um, but the weight i mean this thing is it's a chunk anthony m having a total brain fart who makes the sear and the partisan station nine station ix but station nine is the name of the of the outfit doug bowl says carry carried as you demonstrated handle up not stabbing okay okay gotcha huh. well i'll tell you what i mean if you say handle up and not stabbing that means handle up and slashing which is this is just the the least efficient way to slash you get the least amount of reach you get the least amount of contact with the blade I mean, it's if you're if you're holding the guy back of his head, you know, uh, but this gives you no reach. Like why? If you had a buoy, why wouldn't you like, uh, you know, project, project your force? Uh, thanks much. You rock. Oh, Anthony, you rock, sir. Thank you. Uh, interesting. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, it's like uh, my friend says it's Hollywood. If it's television. It doesn't have to be real. It has to look real. And sometimes that's dramatic. And we've seen that in a lot of movies. You know, Legolas, he he, he did some sword fighting in reverse grip. And I guess there's application sometimes. Uh, like maybe you have one in reverse grip on this hand for more shielding stuff. And then one in, in forward grip here for uh, range and for thrusting and and slashing instead of like when you're in reverse grip um i just think like the slashing part is incidental or it's pressure cutting it's 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 and, and dave i know dave if dave is still with us i know he has a lot to add to this but like in this grip 
you're not reaching out for slashing. You're 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 jamming in. You're coming in. You're doing stuff in close with that edge, um, or you've got it reversed and your slashing is actually a pulling motion um, started by a thrust. I don't know. I don't know. I, I will tell you that that new Conan the Barbarian movie knew it was new in 2011. So 12 years old, but the one with Jason or 13, the one with Jason Momoa, they got so much wrong, not only with the goofy ass sword design, but all the fighting. I was like, Jason Momoa probably knows knows more about fighting without training for Conan than they, than he did after they trained him for Conan. Greg Vanderlip says, I like handle up position as I boxed for years uh, and it's a good position for me, but definitely limited. Yeah, I could see that if you're like, you know, bang, bang. You know, you keep it up here and then and then wh wherever the the blade hits is incidental or you hit and then and then come off. Yeah. Oh, the possibilities are endless. I just had my first uh, um, martial arts uh, class in a little while uh, this past Sunday. I'm still feeling it and I'm bruised on my legs and on, on my arms a little bit, too. But <laughs> but it's good. It's that good, fun. Um and we did some knife stuff and it was, it was so great. It was, it were, there was so much clarity in it uh, because I've done so much uh, Kali and Filipino martial arts. And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, self-perfection in that training and in the stuff I was doing on the other day, it was just very direct. Uh, Pete Davidson says, Bob, have you heard of Ray Floro? Uh, he has some interesting theories and techniques regarding reverse grip. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'd be interested though. Um, yeah, a lot, a lot of, uh, I, I'd be interested. Uh, what is the Randall fighting method? I'm confused now. The Randall fighting method is what I was showing you before with the, um, uh, with the swedge down and, and Randall knives, all, all of them, all of them have the swedge sharpened, even like ones that are, uh, you wouldn't think like hunting knives and stuff, but they have that sharpened swedge. And so they were teaching uh, military guys during World War II um, to fight with their with their K bars or their Randalls or whatever their hunting knife was like this. And in the downward, uh, that sharpened swedge, I, or it doesn't have to even be sharpened, but the uh, sharpened swedge on the K bars back then and on the Randalls were used for breaking, you know, defanging the snake, breaking hands, breaking bone and stuff. And then the blade itself was you stab and you heave ho. It's, it was like a, a, a very basic knife fighting, uh, gross motor motion. The only thing you're capable of doing, most likely, when you're adrenaline dumping and in a melee. Uh, you probably won't be doing all your intricate, you know, cutting and florettis and all that stuff. Not that you would do that with a knife anyway, but you know what I mean? You're going to be less intricate about it. You're going to be more caveman about it. So the Randall fighting method except with a randall you know so they had big they have uh i don't know if you know on the model one there's a divot there i'm not sure if that's for the finger but the finger fits there great uh junkies did i miss your top three trusted companies oh junkie did i miss your top three uh top three would be um top three would be emerson spider co cold steel i think Craig Vincent says, I have two 110s that are 25 and 30 years old. I also have a newer classic 110 along with the 30V, uh, uh, S30V Slim Pro TRX. I actually prefer the traditional 110 over the Slim Pro. They are just better in hand. Oh, man, guys, I think that's about it for me, man. I think I'm running out of steam. Anthony M says, super interesting. Didn't know that about Randall Knives. Oh, yeah, very cool history. Uh, worth worth a read or worth a trip down the YouTube rabbit hole on them. Pete Davidson says he's an Australian Filipino martial artist who is also a high-level fencer. That's cool. That That's cool because those are uh, – Filipino stuff is, you know – works on these angles that come out to the sides in terms of footwork and fencing is so straight in it's a cool combination hey guys swinging in at the end todd carr we are wrapping up man but uh 
this this i think would be a good one to watch on the replay and be sure to join us next week that'd be awesome bob drawing with hand holding a typical randall position drawing wait bob drawing with hand holding in typical randall position drawing hand turned outwards right okay okay because they're probably carrying it instead yes because of the way the sheaths are you kind of have to carry it that way uh, unless you're carrying it on your left side so you do have to pull it out you you do have to turn it like that and grab it all right guys that's about it for tonight make sure to uh check it out sunday we have michael janich on he's the head of special projects for spiderco and also like a world-class badass he's the guy who designed spiderco yo jimbo spiderco yo jumbo the ronin the the micro jimbo and a whole host of knives for other companies and this guy is we don't we didn't talk enough about this stuff in this interview but he he was searching for pow's in vietnam during the 90s he's a language expert he's a spy he did all sorts of stuff for all sorts of agencies very interesting dude michael janich plus he knows how to fight with a knife and design a beautiful knife. He talks all about uh, Spider Co's 2024 lineup. We talk about that and we talk about knife fighting and stuff. So uh, great show on Sunday. Be sure to join us then. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us tonight. It's the official start of the weekend. Enjoy it. Uh, thanks for joining us on Thursday Night Knives. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. <laughs>